Hey guys, good morning. It's really bright out here today. Um, actually, we're supposed to be getting some rain here soon. So, uh, I want to do this in the morning. The sun's just getting high up in the sky, but the clouds are rolling in. But uh, spring rains are continuing and the garden is growing. Uh, we got most of our planting done this week. I still have a little bit more to go. I got to plant a couple things today. Uh, a couple experiments today I'm going to plant. I'm taking me out to the garden. I'm going to plant um, tobacco this year uh, as a wormer for our sheep to be able to grow. And then also uh, I want to grow cotton. So a friend of ours down the road actually was here this morning picking up some guinea hens. He is not internet savvy at all whatsoever. He's actually younger than I am, but he, he, is, he never gets online, never, has never gotten online. Uh, so he'll never watch these videos, but he's a great guy and learned, uh, learned a lot from him. So I'm out here in the garden today, and uh, he gave me some cotton seeds this year and tobacco seeds. And I was always interested in the tobacco. He actually gave me a bunch of tobacco last year for the sheep. And so uh, we gave that to the sheep as a wormer. Seem to do okay on it, and uh, we're going to grow it this year. I'm going to try to grow them and try to direct sow it into the ground. He says he's never done that and had success. He's trying it again this year, so I'm going to try it again this year as well. And we'll try to grow the tobacco. I have a couple spots picked out. See how it goes. If it doesn't work, okay, great. We'll try again next year. Um, you know, whenever you're experimenting with new things, and I try to experiment with a couple of new things every single year, you just never know how it's going to go. So you just give it a whirl. If it works out, great. You learn from it. If it doesn't work out, you learn from it again and, you know, as well, and you just you know, try again the next year. So also cotton. So I have the tobacco and then the cotton. I'm going to grow a couple of cotton plants. I think uh, cotton is... A potential revenue source because there are people out there today who will um here let me focus that it's not focused already uh, there are people out there today who uh are um making money on selling the stems of the cotton seeds uh with the bulbs of cotton on them and they're selling them as a decoration or interior design uh uh, uh I don't know, favor or whatever. They're selling them online. And I can't believe, I mean, one stem of a cotton plant was going for like six, seven dollars, you know. So um, I don't know. We'll see. You know, maybe we'll sell that. Maybe we can sell that online on our website. I'm not sure. But I'm gonna grow it. I just think it's kind of cool to grow it anyway. It's, I think it's just pretty in the garden, you know, to have it. I think it's a pretty plant, you know, in general. I'm not actually ever turning it, planning on turning it into t-shirts or anything like that, but We'll plant that today, but let me give you a quick tour of what we're doing in the garden this year. And then also I want to show you exactly the soil condition we started out with and the soil condition we have now in the garden. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so where we're standing out right now is one of our squash beds. So all of this is going to be a squash bed for the Ozark Mountain Potato that you see uh, for sale on our website. We're selling those like crazy. I think they're sold out right now, but Jamie just cut up a bunch more squash and dried the seeds. So we're going to have some of those available online, um, but that'll be it after those are gone. That's we're done after that. So um, that'll be planted here like we did last year. And uh, I'm sure that'll grow great again. We get some giant squash from those really great tasting squash made for pumpkin pies and, and all kinds of great stuff. And then over here, there's our peach tree doing wonderfully. And it's about third year, I think. And so uh, maybe it's four, maybe that's our fourth year, fourth year peach tree. And so uh, doing great, didn't have any fruit on it because we had the, the freezing blossoms this year. So it just did not work out well. Uh, but hopefully in the years following, we'll have some good fruit on that. Over here is all of our sunchokes, Jerusalem artichoke bed. Look at that, coming up, looking great. We have some great sunchokes again this year. We're gonna do some more experiments with that this year and see how that works. Jamie's found a bunch of stuff online she wants to try with that. Um, potato bed over here. And uh, potatoes are doing good. Over here we have a lot of our garlic. Looking fantastic. I got, man, there's some, there are, I mean, you look at this in here. My goodness, this is like the size of my thumb, stems the size of my thumb on this. I mean, that's great. We're going to have some gigantic garlic this year. So, uh, really excited about that. And we have some more potatoes over on this side of the bed. So, over here I've got corn planted. Four rows of corn. This is the Golden Bantam uh, from Baker Creek. 
so four rows of that planted right there. Uh, over here is uh, planted, I just planted it yesterday, the Delcata squash from Shalom Acres. They gave us the seeds for that. So this is where this is going to come up. Planted in the ground, so we're going to, can't wait for that. Uh, let's go past over here the sunchoke plot again. Over here I planted beans. So beans uh, have, were planted here just recently, and uh, these are, I forgot the, it's a type of bush bean um, that you use for like canning. It's a canning, good canning bean. I forgot, it's a type of horticulture bean, uh, heirloom variety, I'm not sure. But it's a bean that we're going to be using for canning. So a bunch of spots over here. Uh, let's take a look over here at our uh, amazing blackberries. Amazing blackberries. So all the way down the row. Yep. Lots of blackberries going to be coming in this year. Looking forward to that. We had a ton of blackberries. This is a, a, a variety, a thornless variety. So you can see. If I can get that to focus. Focus, focus. Come on, uh, focus. I don't know if it's going to focus or not. But it's a thornless variety. And um, been doing great every year. And so uh, really enjoy growing this. It's propagated really nicely. The trick to growing this stuff is, folks, is when the uh, vines get to a certain length you pinch off the ends okay pinch off the end and then wind it over like a cattle panel or something like that and it'll just keep growing uh, once you pinch off the ends that vine will grow a whole bunch more vines and before you know it you just got a huge amount of blackberries ready to come in so we'll get a lot of blackberries this year off of this trellising here and my goal is this year since we have so much blackberry jam left over in the pantry we just canned a ton of it last year this, my friends, this year is going to be wine. Wine, blackberry wine. And then, of course, this is the arbor. We'll be, we'll be growing our achachas again. Achachas will be coming up here. In fact, there's already a few coming up. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to grow any of the, oh, what's it called? That grew the lufa gourds. Here's some more garlic and some walking, a patch of walking onions. Put some more garlic there. Looking pretty good. Um, this will be the area we grow again, the uh, papalo seeds. The papalo seeds we sell on our website. If you like cilantro, man, this is what you want, papalo, because it won't bolt on you. You can have fresh cilantro tasting salsa in the middle of the summer when your tomatoes are coming in, uh, growing papalo. And so we sell that on our website. This is the patch where we always grow our papalo. It grows about six, seven foot tall sometimes. Amazing. And it lasts till fall. It lasts till fall. Um, now... Some of you guys, a lot of you guys have been asking about the greenhouse and say, hey man, you know, where's the greenhouse? How come, you know, how come you haven't given any updates on the greenhouse? And the reason is because the greenhouse has been turned off. Um, I got to talk to Travis Huey over at my aqua farm and uh, figure out what I'm going to do with this thing. Because, you know, as for an off-grid, for an off-grid... It's just, there's one big thing, man, that it, it has a hard time dealing with off-grid. And that's water. Because, I mean, if you have an endless supply of water where you can just turn on a spigot, aquaponics works great. However, the issue is uh, we have mass evaporation because of the heat, you know, inside the greenhouse, obviously. The system's running inside of a greenhouse. So, and we don't have unlimited water. We have water that we have from our well. Now we have a lot more storage capacity when it comes to rain collection. But... Um, when it comes to actual, you know, getting water back in the system, you know, we're, we were evaporating about 250 gallons a week in the highest, you know, heat of summer. When it's 100 degrees outside, it's 120 degrees in that greenhouse or higher. And man, I mean, it evaporates the water fast. And so you got to replace that water. Well, I shut the system down last year. Um, if you have unlimited water, aquaponics works great. Works great. It produces a lot of vegetables very quickly. And good tasting vegetables. But um, the one Achilles heel in aquaponics when it's off grid is water. You know, where are you gonna get your water? If you have an endless supply, you're golden. If not, you're in trouble. So let me show you the state of our greenhouse. You know, it's really a shame right now, but I am gonna get it back in, in operation. However, I may change some things around in here and 
Uh, I'm going to be meeting with a guy, I think, next week, who's going to be giving me some uh, uh, fig, new fig starts for fig trees, and I may grow some fig trees in here. Um, so we're, we're, I'm playing around with some ideas, but i got to talk to Travis over at myaquafarm.com coming up soon to try to, you know, talk, talk some of these ideas. Um, if you want to learn about aquaponics, myaquafarm.com is the place to go. So here's the dilapidated uh, status of my greenhouse right now. I got some seedlings growing in there. Some of them died. We had a frost two weeks ago. I, got, I just started some more seedlings in there the other day. But the grow beds are just a mess. I mean, there's sage grass growing in here. <laughs> and the fig tree over there died. I just turned the system off, you know, last year and never turned it back on. I got weeds growing in here everywhere. The place is infested with rattlesnakes. So, um, yeah, it's just a mess right now, but I am going to get it back uh, in operation somewhat. I'm just trying to figure out what that's going to look like going forward. But that's the state of our greenhouse at the moment. Um, and there are fish still alive in those tanks, you know, believe it or not. Their fish are still alive. Okay, back outside. This is the main part of our garden, and um, I've got pepper plants coming up. Yay, pepper plants. Those are California wonders. Right there. Over here, I got some, uh, some jalapenos coming up. Um, just a variety of different things coming up right now. I got some uh, uh, Arkansas travelers coming up. I got some lettuce growing. Some of the lettuce I planted did not grow. I don't know what's up with that. I think this is the seeds Brian Barnes gave me. If you know Brian Barnes online over at Growing in Tora, Git, G-I-T. They sent me that, that. I think that's some of their lettuce. I'm not sure. But I think I planted their lettuce this year. Um, over here in this row, I've got the Jerusalem spinach planted. Not a lot's coming up. There's a couple cabbages coming up here. But down there, i got the uh, Egyptian spinach planted. A lot of stuff planted. My boys planted over here today, or yesterday, uh, some green beans. Jamie didn't want as many green beans this year, so I've only got one row of green beans. And the rest of this is reserved for Arkansas travelers coming up, seedlings. So that's going to be all Arkansas Travelers, and the rest over here is going to be all peppers. And then over here will be okra, right there next to the spout. Now the spout, if you haven't watched our videos in the past on this, the spout runs underground. It's all gravity fed, and it goes over to those tanks over there that are filled with rainwater catchment coming off of the outhouse. So all that rainwater catches in those tanks, and they're all linked together. And that gives us about oh, it's over 1,000 gallons worth of water that can be provided into this garden and it's all gravity fed and so by the time you get down there some pretty good some water pressure not a whole lot of water pressure but enough for for use in the garden here so we dug a trench a couple years ago put that pipe in and it's been working out pretty good for us for any type of droughts that come along i got a thousand gallons worth of water there to use on the garden during the hot times of the summer so back outside of the garden area let me show you what the ground looked like for most of our area here where we originally put our garden so if you can see this this is all clay rocky soil this is what the majority of the soil looks like where we built our garden we built the greenhouse i mean it's just ugly nasty stuff i mean this is not iowa this is the ozarks and this is what the ozarks looks like you know, yeah, you have grass growing around here, and that's, you know, it's all neat and everything, but the majority of the soil looks like this, and these grasses can grow in that. Uh, however, you know, when we first got here to the garden, we've done videos on this in the past, is that you have to lime your soil. you got to bring the pH uh, up, okay? It was really acidic. It was like, I think it was measured like 5.7 across the board. And so we put down agricultural lime, we put down some wood ash, and that brought the pH up. Um, and, you know, got the ground a little bit sweeter, allowed the ground to be able to, to use the, the, the plants in the ground, to use those nutrients that are in the ground. And so uh, first things we did is put down some, some, uh, some agriculture lime uh, to get that pH up. And then what we did is we put down manure. We put down manure and we put down lots of covering like wood chips and things like straw 
and compost and you know mulch all kinds of things like that to build up that soil and what happened this hard soil right here this really super hard soil began to soften you know almost within a season and you can do that in one season put down those things put down that lime put down that mulch put down that manure put down that straw and that compost and all that stuff and this ground will almost immediately begin to soften and do what it's supposed to do uh, to allow things like tomatoes and peppers and onions and you know even carrots and things like that to grow in its first year now every year it gets better but you put down that manure especially things like rabbit manure uh, that soil will immediately begin to soften and we have seen it happen uh, you know tough 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 clay soil rocky soil you can grow some amazing things in it um, but you have to work it you know it needs some it needs some tender loving care you can't just plant in this you know you're just not, it's not going to work uh, you know number one lime your soil number two put down some compost some manures rabbit manure works best and i'm telling you guys you can get some productivity out of your ground okay so what we're going to do now is dig down into this bed of mulch and sawdust and wood chips and show you what we've got underneath here uh, compared to what, what we started you saw the ground we started with that rocky clay soil let's take a look at what we got now so let's start digging this stuff away now first off i want to show you right there look at this that is an amazing sight right there just we haven't even gone down past the wood chips yet and i want to show you something amazing this is how you know you have a great garden let me see if i can zoom in on that and i'll bring it up to you so you can see that let's zoom in and focus that my friends is mycelium inside your, your wood chips and your sawdust and that tells you right there you have a healthy you have a healthy of healthy ground going look at that mycelium that produces mushrooms. When you have mushrooms in your garden, folks, that, that, that right there is key to knowing you have a good, healthy soil underneath all of this mulch and wood chips. Those, those mycelium will help, will help feed the root nodules of your plants. That is what you want to see. And the smell is very distinct. I can smell it right now. That mycelium gives off an odor. It's a very heavy mushroom odor. Um, if you can smell that in your garden, you have a healthy garden. Let's keep digging. So... We haven't even gotten past the wood chips yet. Here's more mycelium. I don't know if you can see it. The, the, the smell is very strong. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. Look at all that mycelium right there. Amazing. That's healthy ground right there, folks. All right. More mycelium. Okay. Now, now we're deep into there. And you have black, soft gold i mean now you saw you saw that that red clay dirt that we had look at that look at that that is amazing you can grow anything in that you can grow anything you want in that and all it took was a little bit of tlc a little bit of maintenance to get that ground where you need it to be so that it can produce whatever you want whatever your heart desires you can grow in that Starting from that red clay, horrible looking ground, all kinds of rocks in it, you know, here in the Ozarks, turning into soil that's that people would pay $40,000 an acre for in Iowa to grow their GMO Monsanto Frankencorn. You know, way better, way better, way more healthier, way more alive soil. Look at that. Amazing. That's what you want, folks, right there. Now, I'm going to cover it back up, put all that back together, even though that mycelium is ruined. But it'll grow back. It'll spread again. It'll spread year after year. We keep putting all that mulching on there, and that, that mycelium will stay alive. And it'll produce nice, nice mushrooms in there. Some of the mushrooms you can eat. Some of the mushrooms you cannot. We've put mycelium in here for wine cap mushrooms. And there's other mushrooms that grow naturally that would probably kill you if you ate them. Um, but you have to know the difference. Um, but any mushrooms growing in your garden is a good sign that your soil is healthy. If you can find mushrooms growing in your, in your garden, you have a healthy garden. So our garden's going pretty good. We got lots of stuff going on right now on the homestead. Tim is down the hill over there working on, um, let's see, over there? No, uh, where am I at? I'm, where am I pointing? I'm looking on my camera. He's over there somewhere. Let's take you down there and show you what he's doing.
You want to tell everybody what you're doing today? I'm working on our new laundry area and I'm trying to finish up the roof before it starts to rain. <laughs> Just about done here. We got these uh, roofing pieces from uh, a chicken barn. Oh, it was just a place where they tear down old chicken barns, different buildings, and then they resell the materials. And so it's pretty good used materials that you can just use for your own projects, but they sell them at a fraction of the cost. And so here's inside of the... Right there. It's a nice little... going to be a nice little station. Pretty cool. And then the roof is on. Yeah, in, inside, I'll put the uh, the ringer here, and then I'll have a deep sink here to dispose of the wastewater. And then over here, I'm going to put a hand basin, and then a sink for uh, washing laundry will also go here. And then I'll run the water from the big tank into the laundry house. That's a 1,500 gallon tank right there, 1,500 gallons. And it comes off his roof right there. And I'm also thinking about putting another water tank right here, a 250 gallon tank. This is a pretty good sized roof. Two inches of rain will fill 250 gallons, so. Is that the tank you're gonna use right there? Uh, I may. Yeah. Almost every building on here has a tank to it. There's the turkey coop. And, uh, it's got a tank t tied to it. It's full right now, right? It's full. Most of our tanks are full. Yeah. <laughs> I should add, when you buy uh, used roofing, it isn't real easy to work with because you have the holes in it that have to be patched. Sometimes the edges aren't trimmed exactly square, and so it's uh, it's harder to work with than new roofing. But, hey, at three, $3 a sheet, you know, <laughs> that's... That's you can't pretty, beat that. That's a pretty good price. That's a pretty good price. <clears throat> hey guys, thanks for joining us. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, share us on Facebook. Um, if you enjoy the video, check out this list of amazing folks. These are our patrons. They make all of our videos possible. We cannot do what we do here on YouTube without them. They are the executive producers of our show. Check them out over at patreon.com slash in American Homestead where you can see all the benefits. Other than that, again, like, subscribe, check out the videos on the left, and we'll see you next time on an American Homestead.